This question has many of the juiciest bits of vectors, so let's get started. OACB is a parallelogram. OACB. OA is the vector A, and OB is the vector B. Why did they tell us it's a parallelogram? That's so that we can deduce that if OA and BC are parallel, because it's a parallelogram, they're the same vector. Remember, a vector is just a direction, and if O to A is the direction A, B to C is the same direction and the same length, so that must also be A. If O to B is the direction B, and AC is parallel to it and the same length, AC must also be the vector B. That's why they said that. The line OB is extended so that OB to OD is in the ratio 1 to 3. Let's look at it. OB to OD in the ratio 1 to 3. What I would always do is label it so that we can see what we're doing. OB is the first one, so that's the 1. So let's label it 1 in red. OB is 1. And we can do a little line as well, just for fun. OD is the second one, so it's the ratio 3. So let's label that all the way from O to D is 3. Now here's the crucial bit. Now that we've labelled it, something becomes quite clear. If O to B is 1 and O to D is 3, what would B to D be? Well, it must be 2 to make up the difference. B to D must be 2, because 1 plus 2 equals 3. In other words, B to D is twice as long as O to B. Now, given it's the same line, just extended, if O to B is the vector B, what do you reckon B to D is as a vector? Well, it's twice as long, so it would be 2B. 2B. Let's do it in green. Did that make sense? Basically, we looked at the ratio OB to OD, and we saw it's 1 to 3. So we labelled OB as 1. We labelled OD as 3 with lines. So what became clear is that BD must be 2, so that then the 1 plus the 2, the OB plus the BD, adds up to the 3 of OD. OK. They also said XC is 1 third of BC. Something quite similar, but they've stated it in a different way perhaps to confuse us. So XC is one third of BC, but BC is the vector A, because we saw it's parallel. So XC would be one third of A. Could do that in red. Now let's test out a bit of your knowledge. What would the vector, I don't know, OC be? Vector OC, how do we get from O to C? We would go A along and then B across. Why is this B? Because it's parallel and the same length to OB. So we go A and then B, so we write A plus B, and that's the answer to OC. What about BA? BA is a brilliant airline. I've been on it, but no. BA, the vector, would be, how do we get there? We could go across and down. I would prefer maybe to go down and across. You get the same answer. Going down, we go against the arrow. So is it going to be the vector B? it will be the vector minus B. When you go opposite to the arrow, don't forget a minus. So BO is minus B, and OA is positive A, so plus A. I can write that in the, in the same way, just having the A first. So A and then negative B. So BA is A minus B. It's the same thing as minus B plus A. Now for the question, why in terms of A and B, the vector AD? AD, how are we going to get there? Maybe if we take the scenic route, if we go along here to O and then up. So A to O is against the arrow, so it would be minus A to start with, because we're going opposite to the arrow. And then O to D, because we did that work with the ratios before, we know what it is. O to B is B. B to D is 2B, so all the way from O to D is 3B. There we go, we've done question one. 
Question 2. Here's a real A star question. Prove the points A, X and D are collinear. Collinear is a fancy name, it just means they're all on the same straight line. So if you drew a line from A to D, it would cut through X. How do you prove points are collinear? Well, if you think about it, if we could prove that the path from A to X is in the same direction as the path from A to D, in other words, the same vector, but just further along, just a longer journey, then it proves it's in a straight line. As in, if we said to a tourist, if you head towards A to X, and then carry on in the same direction, you'll get to D, we're saying it's a straight line, it's collinear. Now, A to D, we've already worked out, that's handy. And A to X, let's work that out now. How to get from A to X? We could go the long way, or the short way, we would get the same answer. So let's just go the short way. A to C, well, that is B, isn't it? Now C to X, that's a third A, right? So we just write a third A. Hold your horses. We're going backwards, we're going left along the line. Now O to A and B to C, that was going right. So we're going opposite to the arrow, we're going left, so it would be minus one third of A. Remember, the direction of the arrow here is to the right, so O to A and B to C mean they're the vector A going right, so going left you need to remember a minus, so it would be minus one third A. And writing that with the A first, which is the convention, you get minus one third A plus B, although you wouldn't lose marks of writing it in the other order. Now, do you notice something pretty amazing about these two vectors? You've got minus A plus 3B and minus a third A plus 1B. If you spotted that if you times AX by 3, you get AD, then give yourself a pat on the back because you've just proven they're collinear. If you notice, minus a third A times by 3 gets you to minus 1A, and 1B times by 3 gets you to 3B. And if you're proving that they're just a multiple of each other, you're proving it's the same direction. you just got to go further along. One thing you do have to write, just to get that full mark in the exam, is you've got to show that you know that. So you can write in simple English, therefore, after you've done that little proof, therefore, if we give ourselves a bit of space, as AX and AD are multiples, which just means you have to times it by something, and both start from A, as in you started at the same point, they are collinear. So you've proven they're the same direction and they start at the same point, therefore, they must be the same straight line. Now that wasn't too bad for an A star question.